Baba speak today it's the voice also only baba has to speak because i don't have a voice so please bear with the awful throat and uh, i do not take medicine so it sometimes take a little longer to heal with hot water so we are surviving on hot water now here and i'll be good i'm sure i know once i start i will be absolutely fine and we had a very beautiful bhajan for you planned and uh, a very beautiful girl who's flown in all the way from bangalore to sing but today some test her voice is also completely gone <laughs> so that makes the two of us mother and daughter with no voices to speak and sing but we'll manage we will sing in the end guru priya together we'll do baba's uh, chant why don't you come here and say sai ram you were going to introduce her right poor thing she's not singing but i'll introduce that's guru priya all the chants of sai bisa all the super hit bhajans which are uh listen to by millions of people around the world are mostly in guru priya's voice so i'm sad that we will not be able to hear her completely but we'll make sure something comes out yes so thank you very much archie as usual to have me here 
it feels like i'm standing at home you know it never feels like a stage it feels like i'm back to my home and to all of you to your hearts thank you vallidi for always loving me the way you do <coughs> shaila sagri i love you very very much and kosi amma and my entire team of healers thank you for being here for supporting me and uh, i just quickly like to introduce two people to you this is her script i'm taking it up uh, divya was supposed to do this but i have a dear friend from delhi very very dear to me in fact i don't have friends because of my life i stay busy with baba i actually just have one friend technically in delhi so that is she's here with me rachna she's come along we've gone to tirupati we are coming straight from there so just coming right from tirupati to you that's the way we are so yeah so i have given some of my voice to krishna to sing you know vishnu needs to play his bansuri and have a nice voice so i've lent it there and come back <laughs> and uh, a core team member from delhi uh, has surprised me here i have to take her name uh, warm as the sunshine herself ekta kapoor is here as well from my core team <coughs> Thank you. So thank you, Devi. I took away your script, <laughs> and let's speak now. So I'll sit down in a while. I like to stand, you know, and talk. And uh, when I took off from Delhi on my flight, <coughs> I told Baba, I don't know what I'm going to speak. It's been so busy, no message, and I'm told there are lots of beautiful people coming to meet me as usual, and I don't know what I will be talking. And Baba, dear Baba, as usual, I closed my eyes. I sat. I think we just took off. and i just close my eyes to say gratitude for the trip that it's all happening and the message came and the message was so heavy <laughs> so heavy that i told baba how will i share it with others if i don't understand so like i have shared in my second book 108 pearls of baba sai <coughs> um when i get a message from baba it's like a movie running in front of me it's a visual so i literally see it being played in front of me and that's what gives me the clarity but when i have to come and do this here with you you're not seeing baba's visual so i have to interpret and bring it to you in the most simplified manner so here is a good heavy message from baba for all of you which i have sat just before coming and uh, <coughs> redone one more time so that i can explain so i'm already telling you the message is very profound and as baba was speaking to me just an hour back i was just telling him oh my god baba why did i not realize this in so many years of my life little things that we do every day he's given such a beautiful new meaning to the, uh, those things so today's no message is not a very general message like i share with you about baba it is something very profound and life altering if you understand it i think life altering is a small word uh um, health wealth happiness peace bliss everything will follow if this message reaches your heart today so my effort actually no effort baba speaks so he will make sure it reaches your heart today so on that note let us begin um okay i'll sit for a change because i have to sip hot water i do hope you remember my little um request to everybody I, do you remember i speak better with higher energy when you smile more at me when you look at me like this i want to run away from here okay so <laughs> honest to baba do i sound very bad honest no please yeah bear with me i i don't want to say i'm like sounding like a frog croaking but i am actually <laughs> i'll remember this day also <coughs> okay baba all right <clears throat> let's dive it to his message for the day so he wants me to talk about uh two words starting with the alphabet f and uh he wants one to be shunned out of our lives and the other to be welcomed into our lives but the point is when i say the word you will say oh we know the word but when i talk to you you will understand we had no idea how that one word has been affecting our lives and altering our lives in ways we can't even envisage or imagine he gave me the word fear so i said baba i understand the word fear i know fear is a part of our lives and actually if you go back to the sai satcharita there's a very beautiful thing in uh, i think chapter 5 i'm not sure mo mostly chapter 5 which says uh, that there are four things that are common to every human being yes there's uh, food sleep fear 
and sexual union four things that are common to every human being so when we say they are common which means fear is common to everyone which means even the vedas have laid it out that you will all have fear in your life it's something you can't run away it does not say anger it does not say hatred it says fear particularly it doesn't say stress anxiety it's using the word fear there uh before i took this message from baba honestly i used to think when i talk about fear i'm referring to the bigger fears of life you know when we say uh, uh on a lighter note i had gone to um london to study neuro linguistic programming some 15 20 years back and uh, we were learning how to help people release their fears and phobias so in the class you have a you know like a practice session so i had to ask my partner what my partner's fear was and he had to ask me and we had to work on each other's fear uh, god bless everyone there but people had um, unbelievable fears there people had fear of potato chips fear of toilet paper i mean due respect to everyone but that's the way it was and then the usual fear of heights and aircrafts and closed spaces and when they asked me what is your fear i really had to put effort to think i couldn't pinpoint a fear and my partner got a little offended how can you not have a fear how will i learn my part if you don't have a fear so i told him i'm scared of getting into the kitchen <laughs> i'm not particularly fond of i mean i when i cook i cook well but i have so much responsibility that i rarely cook so when you say get into the kitchen i said that's fear so i remember he had made uh, my my vegetables capsicum had a a smile and my bean was uh, dancing for me something he did to make me feel like falling in love with cooking which didn't happen but all that apart for me fear goes back to the bigger things i was thinking when i was asked what do you fear it took me so long to give him one thing which was cooking which isn't a fear really i had to say something in that session so i said it when i spoke to baba and heard his message i realized that me dijan who is supposed to be fearless and fierce and walking her path well i must be having 20 30 40 episodes of fear in, in a day without realizing and if i have 20 30 take a guess how many you must be having so how let's understand that how did baba explain that to me he says that every time you have a thought we give it the name anxiety stress um anger guilt various other uh we highlight the other important aspects of that emotion but actually it all boils down to one thing fear for example think about your normal day your routine when the children are small will my child do well in studies you think i'm just thinking this is not a fear please now give yourself a moment and if you have to understand my message think about it what is the underlying emotion what if my child doesn't do well what will the child's future be like mother's fear my child is not eating well fear of good health for the child what if my marriage breaks fear of my own future what if i have to live in a toxic marriage fear of how will i live in this marriage i go to work i hate my boss we use the emotion hate i don't like my boss i hate my boss why don't you want to go fear of losing your respect fear of losing your dignity in front of the boss because they're rude they're not nice to you not pleasant to you fear guru priya took a flight mama i'm palpitating how will i sing fear i was traveling and coming here to meet all of you and <clears throat> i have a, a very packed schedule for these 10 days five cities in 10 days so for the first time in my life one month back i started doing my workouts my exercise my walks i would do a workout and also go for a walk and i would call kosia man say i'm doing all of this amma because you know i have to be fit during the trip why did i say this amma did you think about it i mean i always travel i always have hectic schedules i think there was a fear will i be able to handle so much of stress on the trip what did it do to me i'm sitting here proof my own fear manifested as a problem i could not do what i wanted despite all the effort i put in fear 
So I am just pointing a few of these to you. If you sit back, fear of losing dear ones. Your dear one does not receive your call for 15 extra minutes and so many fears manifest in our mind. Everything we are doing in the day, if you go back to your daily routine, there is this underlying fear every single moment, everywhere, which I have really never realized. Honest to Baba, I used to say when people say fear, I would say, oh, I don't have any fears. But these are all fears, right? Small little things to big ones, they're all our fears that we hold on to. What that is doing to us is rather more scary. Now, this is the fear part of it, how it comes into our life. What it does to us is my healer part, which I can tell you. If you study metaphysics, if you study spirituality, well, fear is something that can manifest into uh, the something small as insomnia, something bigger as asthma, something even bigger as... Um, okay. <clears throat> something even bigger as chronic disease, ailment, all anxiety disorders which are so prevalent today are because of fear. Everything that is happening. I'll tell you something. Let's talk about asthma. I was healing a small baby and this is a case which I took up about 15 years back, 12 years back maybe. And one small child came to me for healing. She was barely 2-3 years and she was severely asthmatic continuously getting attacks of asthma, hospitalized, nebulized, put under oxygen support that bad, non-stop cough, non-stop cough, it wouldn't stop. And I spoke to her mother, I did everything I knew in healing because when there is a baby in question, your heart goes there, you know, how, why is the baby suffering, where is my healing going, I'm a healer. Finally, I sat before Baba and I said, why did you make me a healer if I can't help a baby with her little asthma? And you know, like, what is the point being a healer? Guide me what to do, Baba. I just sat in meditation. I closed my eyes and I started chanting, requesting Baba for guidance. And I started getting visuals of the baby's mother pregnant. And I was wondering, why am I seeing a pregnant mother? I'm talking about the child and I'm seeing the mother. I completed meditation. Uh, picked up my phone and called the mother and I said I don't know why but I think this is a guidance is there anything about your pregnancy that you would like to share with me and she said my pregnancy does it have anything to do with my baby's asthma I said I guess so I, I think so would you like to share she said oh my god the I had no idea I would have told you much earlier I've had a very very toxic marriage my husband is a very angry man and he tends to even break cutlery when he's angry, throw plates and things around the house. So my nine months of pregnancy was an intense fear. I was, he would enter the house and I would just shivel. What did I just do? Did you see what I did? Shivel. Fear, what do we do when we are in fear? We curl up, close ourselves. The baby inside experiences everything that the mother experiences. When the mother is shutting herself, the baby is shutting itself too. We didn't know male or female. What happened? The airways are blocked. The baby is born with asthma. And we think it is because of pollution and outside factors. But what was the cause of the, fear of, of the asthma? It was the fear of the mother, which was experienced by the baby in the womb not even outside in the world. Do you see what fear can do to us, how deep-rooted it can get and what damages it can cause to us? So when I say diseases come because of fear, I've given you a live example of how asthma can be caused by fear. Like that, if I go a step further, because if all my talks, you know, I like to bring in scientific research for you to have a logic behind what I'm saying. It's not random what I'm talking. I want you to have a logic why I'm saying this reason. So research has shown, I don't know if there's any doctor sitting here, I mean we, yeah, there is one and yeah, or two and I think the Apollo family is not here else you would have had a team here but to talk in brief about what fear does, there is a beautiful concept everyone studies today called fight or flight which is very very talked about today. When you see a tiger, you either fight the tiger or flight, you run away from the tiger, only two things may happen. Now, in the present situation, if there is a tiger there, 
or are you seeing your boss there who is posing as a tiger or are you seeing a disease in a dear ones you know unfortunately somebody suffering that is your tiger tiger is only a uh yes absolutely a metaphor for actually any form of stress or fear that you're facing so in life when you are facing a tiger or facing any other fear the body goes into an absolute uh um it it gets into a toxic environment and how the i will not go into the science of it but what happens is when your senses see something or feel something that causes you fear it kick starts something called the sympathetic nervous system and the secretion of adrenaline starts which is epinephrine which is when you get adren adrenaline rush for some time it's very good if it is continuous it is very bad it further kicks off the secretion of something called cortisol <coughs> which is also known as your stress hormone every time you experience a fear the body starts secretion of adrenaline after that the secretion of cortisol and then after some time when the fear is gone it settles back it gets that the parasympathetic nervous system the other one kicks in everything is good now please understand in a complete day how many episodes of fear and anxiety do we have maid has not come in the morning oh my god how will i do this day today <laughs> anxiety and fear of how will i go ahead with the day from a small thing as a maid not coming to your driver not reaching on time for a meeting little 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 things kick start that entire process that i spoke about just now what happens is there is constant secretion of epinephrine adrenaline and cortisol in your body it becomes toxic inside your entire inner environment starts becoming toxic to because it's continuous it's not settling down it's not stopping now what happens is that is why the the body's uh the physiology the system is such that the moment you get into such a toxic environment your heart rate goes up your blood pressure goes up sugar starts getting secreted in the body to fight the threat that has come now constant sugar in the body diabetes constant rush of these uh, hormones in the body heart attack blood pressure all of that is happening because of what one underlying word that baba gave us fear so i think today's message is really important because if i want to live healthier if i want to live happier if i want to live a more fulfilled life i work on the larger things i always say we look at the bigger things to do we forget there are very small little tiny things if we start amending and changing them life will change for so much the better than it is today so today's word for the day is given by baba is fear now let me explain to you that was about how it troubles or disturbs us what all it can do the main question is how do i fight it how do i get it over with right i want you to know two things before i go ahead to that one is that uh, uh, a person who is fearful or lonely the toxicity in your body that is created is equivalent to smoking 20 cigarettes in a day this is research i am not saying it this is medical research 20 cigarettes in a day a lonely person a fearful person sitting doing nothing is creating the same toxicity which is happening by smoking 20 cigarettes so if you're fearful and if you're feeling depressed sad lonely this is all what is happening to your body physically and to your life after that because what is happening here in my physical body in my energy body is what i'm living in my life and the second thing now coming to the next one uh <clears throat> research also says that 90% of diseases worldwide are caused due to fear and stress 90% of doctor visits are due to fear and stress which means a sudden pain in the body oh my god why is it hurting what has happened to me do i need a doctor is something wrong you see one of your blood reports one thing is high there and you start palpitating so all that adrenaline rush has already started all that is starting we have to learn to let go the fear if we have to live better lives so another thing now you know how baba loves sharing stories so he's explained this fighting the fear actually is a wrong word giving up the fear is a better way to say it through a beautiful story i'll share the story now 
So he narrates the story of a sadhu, a saint, a very enlightened sant who lives in the Himalayas with his disciples. And one day he calls one of his disciples to him and says, that child, I want you to go and wage a war, wage a war, fight a battle. The disciple is so confused. I've given up everything to live a peaceful life away from, you know, the stresses and tensions of life. And my guru is asking me to fight a battle, go to the battlefield, but in complete surrender and trust what Baba has ta taught us, always be in complete surrender to your guru. If he says jump, jump, don't think a second time. I jumped with this throat and I'm talking without water. This is proof that when you take the leap of faith, everything works for you. So the disciple says, Guru, if you're saying so, I'm ready. Please tell me with who do I have to fight this battle? He says, child, go and fight your fear. He says, oh, I'm scared. He says, exactly, you're scared. Go fight the fear. So the disciple takes his blessings and goes aside, sits there and invokes his fear. He says, I'm ready to fight you in the battle. And in front of him looms this huge, large figure, which is his own fear, black and scary and enor enormous. A sum total of all his fears is now standing in front of him and he's way too mighty, way too strong for this disciple to fight him. He looks at him. And he says, oh my God, I'm even more scared now. How will I do this? See what fear does to you. It makes you even more scared. It, it's like a trigger. You see fear, you feel fear, and it keeps increasing with time. So now he looks at fear and thinks, okay, I'm not winning this battle for sure. I don't know why my guru sent me here. But if guru has sent, there is a reason. So let me think peacefully. So what does he do? Lesson number one. He shuts his eyes and th sits down in meditation for a few moments. When you close your eyes, visually close your eyes, 80% of the world around you shuts down. Do you know that? It's so easy to shut yourself to the world. Just shut your eyes. So simple. He closes his eyes and sits there and starts chanting his Guru's name, meditating and asking for guidance. What happens is, it's like a spark inside him. He opens his eyes, he looks at his fear and he says, first of all, dear fear, now that you stand before me, I will do what my guru has taught me best. I will accept and acknowledge your presence with due respect. I accept and acknowledge that you're there in my life. Please get the lesson here. First of all, when you know I'm fighting a particular fear for my child, for their future, for my life, accept and acknowledge it. Okay, I accept you're there. I acknowledge your presence. So when the disciple says to his own fear, I accept and acknowledge you with deep respect, fear is shocked. Till today, people were only fighting it. Nobody spoke so respectfully and said, I accept and acknowledge you. It becomes smaller. It's shocked. It becomes smaller. It looks in surprise at the disciple. While fear looks on, disciple says, now the second thing. I must seek forgiveness here. Forgiveness first from myself. Why did I let myself undergo so much fear? So I forgive myself today, part of my journey. I experienced it, I forgive myself today. And second, he says, I forgive you for being a part of my life and constantly creating trauma and trouble. So he gives forgiveness himself also and to fear also, both ways. And as we have studied or learnt, which I will refer to after this message, that forgiveness is the greatest virtue we hear. I'll explain more about it later. But forgiveness medically, scientifically also creates great magic, which I will talk about. But what the disciple had done in that moment was he had created some more magic. He had forgiven himself. The moment he forgave him own, his own self, he felt more powerful, stronger, larger. And when he said, I forgive you, fear became even smaller. And then he looked at him and said, well, dear fear, I'm in absolute gratitude for you that you came into my life. And fear says, gratitude? People hate me. They don't want to experience me. And you're grateful for my presence in your life? And he says, yes, I'm very grateful. He says, why? 
He says, because if you had not come, I would, how would I learn my life lessons? My soul's journey would be incomplete. I have to go through these fears, anxieties, stresses, challenges, problems to be able to get where my soul has to get. So I'm in complete gratitude to you that you came into my life. And this fear has become almost invisible, that small. And the disciple has, is looming large in front of his own fear now. And then before uh, he leaves the place, uh, fear is still there, right? He's not gone. He says, before I go away, because I've chosen to go now, I will tell you something. Do you know what feeds your fear? He says, I'm so impressed by what you have done with me. You must be having a great guru who guided you to do this. So as a take back, I want to say something to you. I'll tell you what I feed on. I feed on you, your energy. The more energy you give to your fear, the larger it grows. If you take that energy away, it disappears. You keep worrying about things, fearing things, and when you're fearing, you're giving it energy. You're thinking about it. Energy follows thought. Energy follows intention. So when I fear something and give it my thought over and over and over, it grows bigger and bigger and bigger. Simple. The moment I decide, I'm not giving you energy. I'm not going to fear. I'm in grace. Baba is with me. What happens? I've taken away the earth from under its feet. It loses its entity. So with that message, the fear disappears and the disciple wins the battle against his own fear. Beautiful, isn't it? Yes. This clapping is for him, not for me. You can do better than that. That is not nice. <clears throat> this is not my message, so only clapping for Baba. I'm just sharing what he shared. And in the message as Baba was speaking to me, what I loved most was the three things that he gave us here. First, accept and acknowledge your fear. Accept, okay, you're there, I understand you're a part of my life. Acceptance and acknowledgement is the first step achieved, which means I register there is a fear. I'm aware there is a fear. Back to the Satcharita, where it says that there are four things which are common to every individual. Food, fear, uh, sleep and sexual union. When we say fear is common, the next sentence says, but human beings are blessed with wisdom to be able to deal with these. We have the wisdom, we have to use the wisdom. Baba has given it to us, whether we're using it or not depends on us. So here we go to that part of acknowledging and accepting the fear. Once that is done, part two, forgiveness. Do you know that you can heal cancer by forgiving people? Are you aware there is medical research that cancer is caused when you hold on guilt, hold on pain, hold on grief, hold on trauma. Long term holding of any grief, guilt, trauma causes cancer. So when you sit in meditation and send out forgiveness, we hold on to people who have hurt us. We hold on to situations that have caused us pain. God forbid, but if you think of a loss of a dear one, it may have happened 20 years back, 30 years back, 5 years back. Does it pain any less today? Okay, that moment would be horrible, but the pain stays, right? Somebody hurt you very badly, you think of that person, the pain immediately comes back. Anything you have experienced in life, it has not gone away, it is there, existing in your energy. So what is happening is, we are holding on to these things. When you forgive, you let go. When you say, I forgive you, <coughs> you're letting go that person that, okay, I was holding on to you till now, holding on to that anxiety, that trauma, that they are not suffering, I'm suffering. Somebody caused me hurt. They are in their own world. I am holding on to the suffering. So basically, if you want to heal this entire thing, forgiveness becomes so important. I have heard of so many people uh, who have spoken on camera and shared that they have healed their fear, uh, sorry, their cancer, by just forgiving the person. They knew this is what I'm holding on to. Let me let it go. The cancer disappeared in six months from their body. I don't know if you, Louis Hay, the very famous lady, if you've heard about her, she's merged into God now, God bless her soul. She's given so much good to the world and health. Louis Hay, yeah. She had cancer. <coughs> Doctors gave her six months to live. 
They said there is no way you can survive. Six months is what you have. And what happened after that? She sat back, acknowledged and accepted the reason for the cancer. She had been raped as a little girl. She was holding on to that. She knew I'm holding on to a trauma, a pain. She acknowledged, accepted, forgave the person who had done it to her, it, her, forgave herself and her soul for going through that journey, that okay, it was a part of my learning curve, it happened to me, I forgive myself also, forgive that person. And then comes gratitude. Thank them that okay, what happened, happened for a reason, what Baba says in the Satcharita, the leaf of a tree cannot move without my bidding. Unless he wills it, even the leaf on a tree will not move. When my life moves like that, like a leaf, who is moving it? He's there. He knows I'm shaking like a leaf, I may break and fall. He knows. If he's still making me shake, he's just making my roots stronger. He's just making me stronger. So that faith has to come. So there comes the word faith, the next F. Replace the fear with the faith. And when Baba was talking about gratitude, he explained something very intricate to me which I want to share, which is where I took a breath like, oh my God, I have to share this with you. He said, gratitude gives closure. I really had never thought about it before. He, so Ekta kept this flask here and I said, Ekta, thank you so much. I've closed that thing for now. She's given me water. I've said my gratitude. Anything and everything we are doing here, Validi has invited me. So when I say gratitude, I've closed that event for me. You know, I've expressed my emotion, my feeling, what I'm feeling. It's a closure there. So when you do gratitude for anything to anyone, it means thank you. Okay, we're done now. It's closed from my side. It's a closure. I never thought like that. So Baba says, when the disciple did gratitude to fear, why did it disappear? Why did it vanish? Closure done. Thank you for coming in my life. Now we are done. Now you may leave. It's done. It gives closure. So that is why gratitude becomes so important. And trust me, just as forgiveness heals diseases, gratitude also heals diseases. Any ailment, anything. So Baba's message was, replace the fear in your life, the very, very many fears in your life with the faith. Last time I met all of you, I told you that when I went to Shirdi and asked Baba that I'm giving messages to the whole world for you, why don't you give me a message? I also want a message, I trouble him like that, no, give me a message. And instantly he said, trust and flow, like that. I said, trust and flow, I trust you, I'm flowing with life the way it is, what, what more do I have to do? He said, you will learn. In that one day, ten times he reminded me I was not trusting and flowing. I was standing for Aarti. What if I don't get to see Baba? Shirdi, no? What if I don't get to see him? Will they get me in front? No trust, no. He has to make me stand. No human being is going to make me stand in front of him. Trust and flow. So like that, for little things and big things, Oh God, I'm late. Will I get anything to eat? Baba, I'm panicking. Nothing I've eaten all day. I can't sleep on an empty, empty stomach tonight, no? Something decent, clean. Why are you panicking? Trust and flow. I said, this wasn't panic. He said, this was panic. So for silly things also, Baba caught hold of me. You know, Baba, I won't get a good cup of tea in Shirdi for sure today because I didn't wake up on time in the morning. You'll get it. Walk out, look for it. Trust and flow. I realized for the silliest of chota things, no, I don't trust and flow. And I talk about the very big ones. I'm in trust, I'm in faith. We don't trust and flow. Go back to your own lives. We have more fear, very little faith. Actually, I should give you three words, no? It should be remove the fear and faith and flow, trust and flow. The flow is important because it's not just one time. It's flow means every time, trust and go with it. Trust and move ahead with it. So every time life throws a big boulder towards you, don't get scared. Trust that he is the guiding light. He will not let it come unless it had to come your way. And if it is coming, there is a reason behind it. 
I've shared this in some of my videos that <coughs> when Baba told me everything happens for a good reason, everything happens for a good reason. I was like, Baba, everything? No, there must be some things, you know, which don't happen for a good reason. No, everything happens for a good reason. And I said, oh, the boy Rishi who I've written the story in my book, Sai Baba is still alive, who met with an accident at the age of 18, was declared brain dead, somehow survived it, the whole story of how he came back to life. I said, tell me what is the good in Rishi's accident, Baba? He said, well, he has inspired millions of people around the world. He's a very noble soul who chose to go through that experience to inspire people. And I realized I have hundreds and thousands of letters from across the world telling me, the, if Rishi made it, I'll make it too. If Rishi didn't go away, you know, I have letters from people who said, the, I was going to commit suicide tonight. I have a man, Kausiyama knows we saved, I mean, Baba saved his life. He wrote under my video saying that I was going to commit suicide today and kill my mother and my daughter, COVID times. I'm from a very well-off family. I'm very sane in my head. It's not like I'm, you know, uh, lunatic or mad. I don't have food to give to my old mother. There is no electricity in the house. It's boiling hot. My child can't study. She doesn't have because it was internet classes. No electricity means no laptop. We have no food to eat. And the I saw this video. I'm going to fight it out. If Rishi lived, I will live too. So Rishi's accident is not an accident. It is like a you know a flame that has led people to light. So there is a reason behind every darkness that we look at as darkness. There is so much light behind it, which we have to wait for it to unfold. Unfortunately, the human tendency is you see the darkness and you think, oh my God, there's darkness coming my way. If you just walk through, like Baba always says, every cloud has a silver lining. Don't worry about the dark cloud. Look at that. Silver lining, it is always there. Anyways, about that person, <coughs> so we wrote back to the person on the, just to close this, what I've talked about, we wrote back on uh, uh, YouTube under the video, can you please share your number or call up our team on this number and he called up. So through the COVID period, we provided him rations and books for the child and Kosiyama was in touch, I remember, and she was counseling him and everything. And we have multiple episodes like that of people who've written under my videos. This video saved my life. So these episodes which we consider as dark or bad are actually huge experiences for me today sitting here and talking without consuming my strepsils or my water and my voice sounds so much better is proof that everything happens for a reason. I think I have so much more faith today, leap of faith, no, that yes, Baba will take care. And I'm so grateful to all of you who love me so much, who told me you will speak at five without a problem. It's actually happening. So let's leave aside all the fears and trust and flow with complete faith and surrender. And since I've mentioned the word surrender, <coughs> the most misconstrued word in my opinion in the world today. Every person I meet says, I am in complete surrender before Baba. Everybody says, well, I am not in complete surrender before Baba, so I bow in respect if you are, because if you are in surrender, you would have taken Samadhi and merged into him by now. So this is absolutely fooling ourselves when we say, I am in complete surrender. One thing goes topsy-turvy, all the surrender goes for a toss. Baba, me? Why me? Why did you do this to me? Why are you doing this to me? You're not listening to me. We are fighting with him. We're angry with him. We are broken. We are shattered. Five minutes later, you meet somebody. I love Sai Baba. I have surrendered completely to him. And I looked at that, at that person, really? Five minutes back, I could not see one S of surrender there, okay? <coughs> Five minutes later, I'm in complete surrender. So surrender is not something which comes so easy. I think surrender comes when, uh, I think actually going back to Baba's message of today, which I had not correlated, but I think surrender comes with the same things he's taught us. Accept and acknowledge the pain, the suffering, the challenges, the tests, that if they're there, they're there for a reason. Accept. Whatever comes, he's there, so he has a reason for it. So first thing is accept and acknowledge. Then whatever are the causes for that pain, 
send out lots of good energies and forgiveness to that and finally sum it up with gratitude that if you have come i'm grateful even for the pain and the suffering it is for a good reason then we will head towards surrender which means in complete acceptance lies surrender when i don't question when i don't fear when i don't falter whatever comes i can say with a smile and with peace inside my heart it's okay baba you have a reason for it then i'm getting closer to surrender not before that so i think that is one thing we have to really move forward to which brings me to the next part of your message on how to uh, be able to let go this fear every single day every moment how to forgive because there are millions of people we need to forgive by now with our at the age we are sitting here i'm sure there's a whole long list of people that you need to forgive and you need to seek forgiveness from also and we need to express gratitude from the soil on mother earth to mother earth herself to the various people who work to bring food to my table to those that have nurtured and looked after me throughout my life from my parents to my teachers to my dear ones to my driver to my maid everyone who has played a role i need to express gratitude so your gratitude list is also going to be very very long so if i ask you to sit back every day and think of people and do it i don't think it is a possibility so let's find an easier way to do it and that easy way is what i promised you last time i will talk about today is meditation yes i'm not going to talk too much on meditation today i'll make you meditate the next time when i sound nicer and not as bad as i do i sound very good sorry trust and faith yes so uh i just want to share two three quick things about meditation with you which will be very important for you there is a misnomer about meditation every person in my life i have spoken to about meditation says oh my god i can't meditate it is so difficult it is so difficult to sit back my thoughts go everywhere when i'm in meditation i can't concentrate and uh, how will i ever get into samadhi or that state of thoughtlessness you know there is fear everywhere i can't do it i can't do it i just want to tell you here that this is not the satyuga the treta yug for sure nor the dwapar <coughs> we are in the kaliyug we are expecting kaliyug meditation not satyuk meditation here so problem is our yardstick for meditation is set at satyug we have seen people sitting in samadhi with trees building and coiled around them no so we think when we sit down that will happen we will go into deep samadhi for hours and hours and we will not know what is happening around us so first of all let's change that yardstick let's come to kaliyug and understand we need basic meditation okay now to learn meditation a small trick okay very simple way to do it are you all ready i'm going to ask you to do something now please do it as i say it okay okay please ask your heart to stop beating now what happened you're laughing no not possible sure okay tell your stomach to stop digesting food now cannot then why do you tell your mind to stop thinking logic basic logic this is an involuntary function that is given to the organs in my body my heart is expected to beat <coughs> the heart has to beat that's what it's expected to do involuntarily i don't have to tell my heart please continue beating i have to live longer it will anyways be beating right i don't have to keep telling my stomach i'm about to eat get ready to digest it was involuntary function the mind's function is to think involuntary function so when i sit in meditation and say i can't stop my mind well if you can stop your heartbeat then you can stop your mind and if you couldn't stop your heartbeat then don't worry about stopping the mind so simple right don't worry about it then let's go the easy way when you resist something my greatest lesson during covid times was master what you resist we resist so many things in life and fear also actually master your fears also comes from there because we resist everything because of fears we don't want to do it so coming back to meditation anything that you resist flows with more energy towards you, you take a tap open it up 
put your hand and try stopping the water or actually put your hand before you know turning on the tap put your hand there obstruct it completely open the tap when you move aside it will come with more flow actually it will move your hand out with the flow it will be so much so when you obstruct the flow of water it flows faster when you put a dam on flowing water it comes with so much more force when it comes out of there right so similarly when i'm in meditation and i push myself to not think i tend to think more because whatever you're trying to resist and stop comes back with more power so what do i do trust and flow simple close your eyes i told you 80% work is done just by shutting your eyes think of baba take his name keep chanting inside sai 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 do a few deep breaths and slowly let yourself go into meditation don't worry if a thought comes let the thought come acknowledge accept let go remember that okay i know you're there we'll talk about it later go for now i'm in meditation another thought comes move let me let me be slowly slowly you'll start coming down and when you go into the deeper states you know when we move from being in our present state of mind which is the beta state active mind just go towards alpha which is slightly lower i'm not asking you to go very deep slightly lower the moment you enter alpha and there when you start forgiving people and expressing gratitude you're connected to the cosmos infinity when you're open eyes and saying thank you you're doing one on one eyes closed and deeper level you can actually forgive a hundred people at one time a thousand at one go you can actually seek forgiveness from a thousand express gratitude to a thousand at one go so when you go deep that is where you sit and say baba i accept and acknowledge all that is coming to me good or bad it is good i know because you're there and the next step is you say i forgive all those who have caused me hurt and i seek forgiveness from all those that i have caused hurt to from my heart and i express gratitude to all those who have played any role in my life and gratitude to baba do that when you're in meditation and please see how your life changes i have seen my life change with every meditation i have done i have seen my dreams manifest with everything i have asked in that state when i ask problem with the world today is <clears throat> we want to get things we want to get material benefits spiritual benefits but we are doing it outside of ourselves the light is inside of ourselves you have to close that outer door shut this shut this the senses and go inside and then you will see anything and everything you want comes to you like this trust me in the morning then you wake up go into meditation and pray for something you will instantly get it instantly it is shocking how instant it is but you get it when you ask for it in meditation problem is we keep running after it all our life and it runs away from us all we had to do is sit back accept acknowledge and go into that state it will all happen for you so meditation is not something to be afraid of or fearful of if you can spend 5 minutes a day 10 minutes a day any amount of time in a day that you can give to meditation trust me it is good enough it will do its work so please start taking that time out don't worry morning afternoon night this thing about mornings are auspicious brahma mahurta are you meditate that is auspicious don't worry about the time it is any time before sleeping please do that so the only way is to counter fear and stress is through meditation 5 10 minutes of meditation can give you what 5 10 months of working outside will not give you and i can promise you that in writing i can give you on a stamped stamped paper that you can keep working towards thing if you're trying to cure a disease that is in your body going to doctors um taking medications working on yourself you take one year to do that thing and you sit for one round of meditation you can heal it i'm promising you that how will it happen practice 10 minutes 15 minutes every day 20 minutes every day just close your eyes and i'll teach you one small thing before i go since i'm talking meditation today i would like to teach you something very beautiful called 
belly breathing, which is an instant way to relieve your stress, relieve your anxiety, relieve your fears. I told you about the sympathetic nervous system. And the parasympathetic is the one which is the happy hormones. When you have all the happy hormones in your body getting secreted, that is when the parasympathetic nervous system is at work. The dopamine, or the oxytocin, you know, the endorphins, all that makes my body free of toxicity, free of disease. That happens when parasympathetic works. To bring your body from that stress state, chronic stress state, to a chronic happy state will take you less than 20 seconds if you can do belly breathing. 20 seconds I'm saying, lesser actually, 10 seconds. How do we do belly breathing? How do you breathe? Please sit back, spine erect. And when you take a very deep breath inside, what happens? Chest goes up. Chest goes up. That's the wrong way to breathe. It only tires your neck and your shoulder muscles. So 90% of the populace does that. We work on our uh, chest when we breathe. This part should not move at all. That's why we call it belly breathing or abdominal breathing. So you can just put your hand here on your stomach. And when you take a deep breath inside, your stomach should go out like a balloon is inflated inside it. You see, see how much contraction is happening here? Goes out, goes in. So let's do it together for a few seconds and see what it does to you. Please sit back, relax, close your eyes. I'll count you. <clears throat> so with the counts that I give you, you do it, please. To the count of five, we will breathe in. And to the count of five, we will breathe out. So breathe, deep breath in. One, two, three, four, five. Out. Two, three, four, five. In, two, three, four, five. Out, two, three, four, five. Continue yourself and make sure your eyes are closed. Make sure your lung, your chest is not moving and your stomach must go out and in as you breathe. Five out, five in. And let me make it a little more uh, beautiful for you. We're going to do five in. Hold your breath for two seconds. Five out. Hold your breath for two seconds. So let's do it together. Breathe in. Two, three, four, five. Hold. Two. Hold just means stop your breath. Sorry, you're all doing it wrong. I'll show you once. Open your eyes. Look at me, please. holding have a bad throat this is holding and then exhale and hold you don't have to close your nose do nothing just hold it where it is so best is to inhale from the nose exhale from the mouth because exhalation is actually letting go all the toxins so I love it when I do a strong exhale let go the letting go of all fears, anxieties, everything can happen with that breath as you breathe itself. So let's do it again. When I say pause for two, you just hold it for two. Then we'll go longer after this. Breathe in. Two, three, four, five. Hold. Two. Breathe out. Two, three, four, five, hold, two, breathe in, two, three, four, five, hold, two, breathe out, two, three, four, five, hold, two, Breathe in, two, three, four, five.
five hold two breathe out two three four five hold two lovely thank you so you can do this at home every day for about 10 minutes and you will not have to work hard to get into meditation when you do this deep breathing and close your eyes and sit you slip into meditation effortlessly you will be shocked and surprised how you will just go into deep meditation without any effort if you just start with breathing correctly just make sure you do it right So it's breathe, hold, exhale, hold, inhale, hold, exhale and hold. Just that much and rest will happen with trust and flow. And on that note, before I wind up, I've not spoken about Baba, how can I go? Yes, of course, Baba says in the Satcharita, <coughs> the act of meditation, he says when the Dhyata, the dhyaya and the dhyana become one. You remember that? So who's the dhyata? I am the dhyata, I am the one meditating. Dhyaya is the act of meditation. And dhyana is the meditation. So when all that, the dhyata, the dhyaya and the dhyana become one, that is when he says you merge into me which is so beautiful, you go deeper and deeper, you lose yourself, you lose the reasons for the meditation and then you become one with that experience of meditation is when you merge into Baba and that is so beautiful. You know, you're enjoying your lives living like this. Imagine the joy of going inside and meeting Baba face to face in meditation, of experiencing Him there, feeling Him there. It is so, so, so beautiful. I have written books thanks to those meditation because when you go deeper, the experiences you have are so, so uh, vast and multifold of what you would be seeing in this life. So that is something we must do as a must. And uh, the last thought that I want to share is that uh, Guru Priya was supposed to sing this today, but since she's not singing, I'll at least say the lines out. I thought after she sings, I will conclude. <coughs> We were going to do Rahim Nazar Karo Amore Sain for you, that entire thing. One line I will say out of this. Khali Zamana Mene Gawaya. Khali Zamana Mene Gawaya. Saathi Akhir Ka Kiya Na Koi. Rahim Nazar Karo Amore Sain. Tum Bin Nahi Mohe Ma Baap Bhai. So we are telling Baba, I'm a fool. Kanu is saying to Baba, I have family, I have friends, I have everyone. And I think they are my companions for life. But I didn't realize I'm all by myself because they don't come with me, they don't go with me. I come to this world alone. I go from this world alone. There is only one companion who was with me eternally, who is with me today and is going to be with me eternally. And that is only you, my Baba, nobody other than you. But I have given a time to sing, I have given a time to sing, I have given a time to sing, because I am so busy making my friends, working around my families, that I forgot this is my journey. I forgot this is my soul's journey. And the only one who is walking this path with me is my Baba whose hand I have to hold. So before it gets too late, before we realize there is nothing to look back, I think it's time we start spending more time with him. And more time is so simple with Baba. Read more about him, read his Satcharita, chant his name, meditate more. And most importantly for me, I always say live a meditative life. If you meditate 10 minutes in a day and after that go back to your stresses and your tensions and anxieties, there is no point of the meditation. Every fear has to be go let go, which means I get every fear when I decide, oh, I was thinking a fearful thought, let go. Oh, this was also fear, let go, trust and flow. Oh my God, again I got angry. What is the reason behind? Oh, I was scared about this. Let go, trust and flow. When you work around yourself every day, every moment throughout life, only then we can expect to reach that stage of oneness with Baba. So please do this as a continued act 
and Baba is always there, you know. That is why the beauty about Baba is that, um, like I always say that, I love everybody, I love all my gods, but I fell in love with Baba, it's different. When you love somebody, it's beautiful, but when you fall in love, the world changes, the sun shines brighter, the moonlight is more beautiful, the butterflies have more color, the swaying trees and the plants look more beautiful, the river looks more gorgeous. Why? Because I'm in love. So what has happened here is, falling in love makes me one with nature. Even if you're in love with a human being, when you fell in love with your spouse or your partner at a younger life, life changes when we fall in love. Everything in nature looks so beautiful because love makes us one with nature. So when you fall in love with your own guru, you can imagine what madness and what oneness you can experience. How beautiful must that emotion be to be in love with this man sitting here, the handsome boy that I'm in love with. Yes, so let's be in love with Baba and trust and flow and walk this journey together. Thank you so much. And I spoke without sipping a sip of water, not one sip. So this is unbelievable, Baba. <clears throat> I haven't spoken a sentence in so many days and my voice is going back now. Oh my God. I finished my talk and the voice goes back to Baba. So here we are. Thank you again. I look forward to seeing you again. And if you have any question, please, I'm happy to answer. Who started meditating. So I don't try to still the mind. But I don't know if I am having success with meditation because I don't find a point where I'm still, but I'm very happy. So I find myself always getting, you know, like the shoe flower, the hibiscus flower, I always find myself getting into something. Many journeys, I go all over the place, see all sorts of things. But how do I know I'm not conjuring it up? And that's the mind, see? So I don't know that I don't have a period where I have thoughts, where I can sit down and say I am in gratitude to something or I am in like releasing anything. So even now when I closed my eyes with your exercise, I am immediately seeing things. I saw Hanuman, I saw Garuda, I saw Krishna. So I really don't know if I am conjuring it up or if that's a meditative practice. <coughs> Baba literally gave me a voice for some time. It seems to be going back. Okay, Rekha, so first of all, the problem in our world is that we are so conditioned to believe things. We have been conditioned that meditation has to be a particular way. Okay, only if you are in stillness, only then it is meditation. Meditation is my personal experience with my Guru, my God, with my soul. It is each one's experience to themselves. Somebody may have visuals and visuals and visuals. Somebody may see nothing at all. Somebody may feel so much in meditation. Somebody may feel nothing at all. Everything is meditation. What is the proof it is right? Are you loving it? I love it. Yeah. It's perfect. If you're not loving it, if you're struggling with it, then there is something missing. When I sit in meditation, there are times for hours I don't know where I am. I even, I don't feel my body, otherwise you ask me to sit, uh, sit in uh, suk uh, Sukhasan, cross leg, chokri like we say, after 15-20 minutes I'll get restless. But two hours, two and a half hours I'm sitting, no movement, I don't know where I am. There are other days, there are visuals and visuals and I'm flowing and flowing and seeing such beauty. And there are other days when I'm there and I'm doing my forgiveness, my gratitude, I'm present but I'm enjoying that part of it. Every meditation is different and you have to enjoy it. Nobody from outside can answer a question if your meditation was good. If you are loving the experience, it is fabulous. Ask yourself that question and get your answer. My pleasure. Yeah, Saidi. So my question here, the thought that arose in my mind was, you were saying um, when there is a tunnel of darkness, you find the light at the end of it and you were saying, uh, Baba would say, look at the silver lining. So um, uh, the thing that I wanted to ask you was uh, a personal uh, thing that happened to me. So my uh, dad passed away when I was 19 years old and he fought a uh, battle of cancer and uh, he had to succumb to it. 
So as a 19 year old at that point, um, I was very enraged. I wouldn't go to temple because I lost my dad. At that point, how would I reconcile myself? Because I didn't see a light at the end of the tunnel. So I thought, <coughs> let me ask you that yes, question. Yes. So when we are younger, I wish we had the wisdom we have today. I really wish we had that kind of wisdom that we have today. That is why when we sit in meditation, I always say begin by forgiving yourself. Because there were times I was angry with myself. There were times I was angry with my God. There were times I was angry with people around me. But with that kind of wisdom, that was perfect. I only knew as much. Today's Divya understands that there is a light behind the tunnel. That Absolutely. Divya did not understand. Yeah. So she went through her learning curve. She went through an experience and grew stronger through it. Today Divya is a far stronger girl than the Divya who lost Papa at that time. She knows how to deal with things. Today you can see the light there. So when you sit back today, I think you should just let that go as a part of you, but you're holding on to. Please realize you're still holding on to it. That girl has not gone. Yes. The younger Divya is still asking, why did I not understand? Because she was younger. She only understood as much. I think no forgiveness will be complete if you don't start by forgiving yourself. Your younger self, as I say. And your younger self is you two minutes back also. It is not younger, it does not mean it has to go back five years and ten years and twenty. We have all done things, including me. It's not that I have not made mistakes. I've just probably learnt better and thanks to Baba, you know, learnt them well and taken them well in life. So when I sit back, I also tell myself so many times in my meditation that it's okay that at that time I could not understand this thing. So you're seeing the light now, aren't you? Absolutely. Lots of it. <laughs> yes. Now I realize. So it's yes. perfect now. Don't worry about what was not. Yes. Wisdom comes with time, right? Thank you, Dee. You told us to forgive the people who have hurt us. What if you feel very sure that they don't care? How does it matter if they understand it or not? What matters is, am I releasing that pain or not? Am I relieving myself or not? What is happening is, anything I'm holding on to by not forgiving, they are not concerned. They are not bothered as I understand. They are not affected. I am severely affected. Who is suffering in the bargain? I am. Whose health will get damaged over a period of time? Mine. Not them. So I should, the most important thing is, you have to make a choice here. All this, what I'm doing, am I doing it for people? Am I doing it to prove to others? No, I'm doing it only for myself. This is for me that I'm doing it. I'm forgiving because I need to let it go. I'm forgiving because you still have tears as you talk to me. You're holding on to that pain. That has to go out of the system because these tears, these traumas are which slowly build as disease in our body, which build as problems in our life. You have to let it go. And you have to do it only and only for one person, which is you yourself. Don't be worried. Don't be bothered if they understand. You do it and cleanse yourself. That is important. Baba will take care of them. What is their journey is between him and them, not yours. Anything else? You want to know my favorite food? <laughs> Thank you so much for this. Thank you. I've done this. Archie, I made it. Thank you. Thank you, Baba. Pau, 
साई नाथा